Hello and Assalamu Alaikum, Ultras Can Diagnostics here. This is the CBCT of the patient that you had requested. The area of interest is the upper arch for implant evaluation and for endodontic evaluation of the um, upper right quadrant. Now, when we look at the panoramic view, you can very clearly see that the root canals have been done, um, haven't been done very properly. Um, we've got faulty bridges. Um, so we're going to take you through one, um, one, two at a time. We're going to focus on the upper right uh, first molar. This is the transaxial view, and this is basically the proximal view. On the transaxial view, you can see that this is the distobuccal canal. Um, it is short. It has short obturation, approximately six millimeters. Um, and we've got a periapical radiolucency along with perforation of the buccal cortical plate. When we move towards the parietal, the parietal is also extremely short where they haven't done obturation and they just placed the post which is extremely radio opaque. And here you can actually see that the obturation is again 6 millimeters short here um, and there is a periapical radiolucency present along with it causing immense bone destruction. Moving to the mesobuccal, again short obturation and we've got periapical radio, uh, radiolucency which is actually a J-shaped radiolucency involving the furcation and perforation of the cortical plate. So this is what we see on the upper right first molar, moving to the upper right second premolar. So this has a root canal done, two uh, canals have been obturated but both of them are short and we can see a periapical radiolucency associated with it. We also see a fracture in this tooth which is quite evident as it is probably under the bridge you can see that the tooth is probably holding but there is a very significant fracture that you can see right here and this fracture which is marked by um, an arrow is actually at the level of the crest of the bone and hence this tooth um, and its survivability is in big question. This is the edentulous area where implant uh, possibility is definitely there. We've got um, 5 millimeters of ridge width with 17 millimeters of ridge height. Moving to the canine, we've got a canine which is not endodontically treated, does not have any periapical radiolucencies, and we cannot see any secondary caries underneath this crown. The lateral incisor is um, relatively carious. Um, you don't see any obturation or any root canal treatment done in the lateral. Moving to the central incisor on the upper right hand quadrant, this central incisor has been obturated um, fairly decently. No periapical radiolucencies can be observed. The upper left central incisor is edentulous, and here, if we measure the ridge, it's going to be approximately 5 millimeters with 15 millimeters of length. This is the upper right lateral incisor. This is supporting the distal abutment of the um, bridge on the anterior region. Um, this we can see has gaps between the bridge and the uh, supporting tooth, and also not endodontically treated but no periapical radiolucencies. This is the upper right canine. The upper right canine seems to be doing well. It has a distal cavity and a filling which shows secondary caries. But other than that, no major periapical radiolucencies can be observed. Now, this is the implant which is placed on the top right first premolar region. This is a very um, long implant, but this implant is actually placed quite palatally. So, we've got approximately... 4 millimeters of bone on the buccal aspect, but absolutely no bone on the parietal aspect of this tooth, uh, of this implant, my apologies. This is the implant placed in the second premolar region. Again, um, very thick implant for the ridge. Um, we've got absolutely point, less than 0.1 mm of bone here and less than 0.1 mm of bone on the parietal aspect. We don't see peri-implantitis, but we don't see any major um, osteointegrated pros, uh, possibility. The implant on the top left side, which is the distant most implant, is actually placed quite central of the ridge. We've got 2 millimeters of bone on the buccal, approximately 2 millimeters of bone on the uh, palatal aspect. It is central of the ridge with no bone loss. However, we're going to actually now show you the axial view, which is the top to bottom view. Here you can see that the implant in the region of the first premolar placed quite palatally as you can see here. This implant place is quite central of the ridge but is a very thick implant for the um, for the size of the ridge as you can see very little bone here. This implant is placed quite central of the ridge and is supported by good bone in this region. This is the sagittal view. Sagittal view is basically the side to side view. 
and on the sagittal you can see that the implant in the first premolar is placed um, relatively close to um, the natural abutment tooth it is two millimeters away from the canine and the implant on the distal most aspect which we does show a little bit of um, peri-implantitis close to the apex is also placed very close to um, the upper left seven um, and hence uh, during prosthetic evaluation um, or prosthetic uh, fabrication this will need to be kept in mind that the crown of this is overhanging um, the implant and hence um, the implant prosthesis might get compromised because of the positioning. The implant on the middle does show a little bit of peri-implantitis but nothing very significant. If there are any further questions, please feel free to reach to our team. Thank you very much.